Hey everybody, this is Gary from Dixie Overland, and this is going to be the first of a video series that I'm going to call Tailgate Talk. All right, so uh, this is kind of one of those videos where I'm just going to kind of try to get it all in one take and, you know, just, you know, just talk to the camera a little bit, talk to you guys, the audience, and uh, sort of, you know, talk about some things related to the Jeep, uh, Gladiator, uh, Overlanding, uh, some of the experiences we've had, uh, anything like that. So. I guess I'll just go ahead and start out. It says, well, you know, Gary, have you ever taken your uh, Gladiator overlanding yet? And uh, the answer to that is not yet. However, that is coming up very, very soon. Uh, the time that I'm recording this video, uh, it is Wednesday, um, January 13th. And so, I, by the way, I hope to have this uploaded very soon. Uh, and so I'm actually going uh, this Friday going to uh, Hot Springs uh, Overland Park uh, over in Arkansas, uh, which we're really looking forward to. And it's gonna be actually a really good pressure test of how the, uh, how the Gladiator does and how uh, the gear that we have is going to be used and uh, anything that we need, we'll figure out what we really don't need. I think that's just as important. Uh, we'll get to test out the rooftop tent for the first time as far as uh, sleeping in it uh, and seeing you know our experience with that. Uh, the temperature is supposed to be somewhere around the you know highs in the upper 40s to low 50s uh, with lows uh, being around the 30s low 30s um, down into the high 20s which yeah that sounds a little chilly uh, so I have encamped in weather that chilly uh, since I was in Boy Scouts years ago so it's going to be interesting uh, to see so it's Marcy and I that are going, of course. Uh, we're gonna leave the dog at home this time because we wanna make sure that we get everything, you know, sorted out uh, with our gear first uh, before we start introducing uh, our golden doodle uh, goose into it. And uh, that way, you know, we, uh, we can provide a very comfortable atmosphere for him as well whenever we go uh, over landing. Uh, so this is going to be a really good test. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be about nine hours from here to drive. Uh, but we're going to uh, stop off. I think it's about four and a half to five hours. It's almost a good halfway point uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Get some of that famous Memphis barbecue that I hear so much about. Uh, so we'll be in the land of Elvis there. Uh, we may actually even stop by Graceland uh, just to you know, see it. I've always heard about it, so uh, it's going to be very interesting to actually uh, see it in person because uh, I've never been to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so it's going to be uh, really cool. I'll have to put on my blue suede shoes for that one. So, um, yeah, the uh, uh, the opportunity that we have to do this is actually pretty cool. It's going to be over, of course, Martin Luther King weekend. Uh, so that means that we get to spend a little bit extra time out there. We're going to be arriving on Friday, uh, spending Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so we're actually going to come back on Sunday. Uh, we want to take that Monday, uh, you know, to rest up and unpack our gear, get the tent aired out, all that good stuff. So the last thing you want to do is pack away a wet tent. And uh, I think we're supposed to have the chance of some showers on Sunday. What the timing of that is going to be, whether it's going to be in the morning time when we're packing up or whenever, um, you know, uh, we want to be out before that or uh, at least uh, you know not be packing up in the rain but I will say though that uh, you know even with you know even if it didn't rain condensation and all that stuff if it gets trapped in your tent and you get mildew, mildew introduced into that good luck with that one to get it out yeah that's that's basically a permanent fixture of your tent from this point on and uh, at that point you're just out of luck so in posting this, um, down in the comments, I would love to see any questions that you have for Marcy or myself um, regarding the Gladiator, um, you know, regarding anything life-wise. Um, you know, we've, we've had quite a journey to get to where we are today. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, not been the easiest journey by any means, but uh, the thing is, is that we are here uh, and that we are, uh, you know, living uh and trying to encourage others uh, to take advantage of every moment that life gives you just because, you know, honestly, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Even though it's not guaranteed, you still want to be smart about it, though. I'll say that. But, you know, just, uh, again, ideas for tailgate talk and uh, some of the different things that, uh, that you want us to talk about. Uh, another thing, I mean, again, you know, you see the rooftop tents on here. That was 
a uh, bit of an effort. Uh, shout out to my buddy Randy for helping me put this on. It's not a feather. <laughs> this thing weighs about 130 pounds or so. Um, you know, so doing it on your own on top of a full rack uh, was going to be was going to be a thing. Uh, so uh, anyway, he helped ensure that success, and so uh, very very grateful to him to do that. And then of course we secured it down to the rails that we have. And you know, I actually think that I may have to modify the bed rack just slightly. Uh, I'm lacking about a half inch to where I can actually mount it through these rails completely. These rails that go basically north to south of the vehicle uh, versus you know doing it on these that go more east to west. Um, I don't know if I feel better about it that way. I think I can get one more anchor point down on it. It's anchored in five out of six positions that I think I can anchor it down on, but I could probably do, you know, maybe eight positions that I can anchor it on to make sure, you know, as they say down here, that thing ain't going nowhere. But, uh, you know, it's just going to be one of those things that, you know, after this first, first test, we'll see if that's even necessary. It may not even be something that's necessary. It may just be a nice to do or, you know, maybe if I'm bored one day, just kind of adjust that. Um, so that's kind of uh, on my radar to do. Um, it is kind of chilly here today. Uh, it's in the low 40s, which, you know, for Alabama, we're not used to cold weather very much, or at least not for prolonged amounts of time. Um, and if we are out in the cold, we're sitting in a deer stand or something like that, you know, uh, we're not uh, just out and about in it just to be out and about in it. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to spring because I'm not a big fan of the cold weather anyway, personally. Um, some people are. It's great. Yeah, if you, if you like being cold, that's cool. I'm more of a tropical person. I'd rather be hot than cold because I feel like I can do more when it's hot outside versus when it's cold outside. That's just my opinion. So that's how I like it. Um, you know, I am here in the driveway, by the way. So if your cars drive by uh, or anything like that, that's what's going on. This neighborhood's under construction. So we are uh, have a lot of vehicles, a lot of contractors coming in now. Uh, so, you know, not, not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's progress. It's people working. Uh, people getting uh, employment, doing jobs, so it's always an awesome thing, always an awesome thing. Um, let's see, what else? Um, probably going to do a, a ceramic coating, just, uh, you know, one of the sort of spray ceramic coatings that I can do myself. I know how to uh, wash and clay bar a vehicle, so I'm going to do that full prep. And the reason I'm going to do that, you know, I, I'm not trying to keep the Gladiator very frou-frou or anything like that. I understand it's a Jeep. It's made to get muddy and this and this. Yeah, that's great until you have to wash all that mud off or until you have to, um, you know, get resprays because your paint deteriorated, your clear coat deteriorated. It also discourages scratching on it. So again, you know, you pay a lot of money for these things. Why wouldn't you want them to stay new looking as long as you could? And uh, the one that I've seen, uh, as far as the best ceramic uh, spray, uh, is by Turtle Wax, the Hybrid Solutions by Turtle Wax. There's an awesome, awesome channel out there called Project Farm, and I'll link it down in the description below. But Project Farm, um, he does tests on all kinds of things, and he does them so thoroughly and very scientifically, measures everything, does things, but it's not boring by any means. You know, it's basically what Consumer Reports, the magazine, used to be. Um, and now, you know, it, you know, you get a few ads put in your magazine, it's amazing how your product views sort of switch and, and, and skew a little bit, uh, where this product was, you know, uh, maybe not performing so high, and now because they took out an ad in your magazine, that kind of has changed their opinion a little bit. Well, with Project Farm, uh, he's not sponsored by anybody. You know, he gets all of his uh, money through YouTube and uh, Patreon subscribers. So he does very, very honest reviews on everything. And anyway, going, you know, not to not to get off in too much of a tangent, but the um, uh, the ceramic spray that he uh, was testing, uh, the one that was the best performing, was the Turtle Wax uh, Turtle Wax Hybrid Solutions, and uh, it's thirteen bucks a bottle. And I said, you know, if I can put that level of protection on my paint for $13 and maybe, you know, uh, a few beers and doing a clay bar job on it. Because again, it's not a, not a lot of painted surface on this. I mean, it's not like a regular car. Half your painted surface is gone, right? Or at least a quarter of it. Um, and I'm probably gonna end up linexing the bed, so I'm not really worried about doing the bed part of it. Uh, but for the other parts, you know, the hood, the doors, the quarter panels, all that stuff, the fenders, at least the, the, the side fenders, not the flares. I think it'd be very, uh, 
very beneficial to do that. I mean, again, you know, it makes the, the job of keeping your Jeep clean and running properly and all that a little bit more effortless. All right, y'all hang on. I got a semi truck coming by. I'm going to give a wave to our hardworking dudes out there that do all this transport and stuff like that. My dad was a truck driver for over 20 years uh, in the civilian world, and he did it in the military as well. So, I mean, these dudes work very, very hard. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have them uh, around here doing things. So, um, anyway, I think this video is right at about 10 plus minutes. So, I'm probably going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, some future stuff that's coming. Uh, oh, there's a video that I've made about does a rooftop tent reduce your gas mileage? Uh, and by how much? Especially with a full bed rack. All right, not the half bed rack that goes below the cab, but a full bed rack. So that is going to be coming out here very shortly. Uh, so I can't wait for that. Uh, go over to Dixie Overland on Instagram uh, and find us on Instagram. It's a uh, uh, just our Instagram page again, showcasing some of the some of the stuff that we do more in, in still life photos versus video. Uh, but again, thanks so much uh, for watching this video, for subscribing to our channel. Uh, if you have not already, please do. Um, I feel like all the best is yet to come. Um, there's going to be a lot of good stuff here uh, with this Jeep Gladiator that we can't wait to showcase. Um, you know, uh, again, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, like the video, please. And uh, I'll see you next time for the next episode of Tailgate Talk. This is Gary from Dixie Overland. Have a good one.